Hello everyone, it's Hannah from Story Kids. Welcome back, I am so happy to have you here. If you've missed any of our more recent episodes, you can check right down below this video for them. And also down there is the link to our Facebook page if you or your parents or guardians would like to check that out. So today I have a really fun story for you, but before we get to that, I wanna tell you two quick things. Number one, it is so nice outside. As you can see, it finally stopped raining. The sky is blue, the sun is shining. So I would encourage you to go outside, maybe read or listen to a story while you're outside. Get some fresh air, get some sun. Remember to wear sunscreen and hydrate a lot because it is getting hot. But definitely get outside. It's really nice out and you should enjoy your summer while you can, if you can. And the second thing is that I have a cut on my finger so I'm, I'm all right, but I have a band-aid on, so if my finger gets sort of stuck on the pages, that's why. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to show you today's story. I know that during normal summers, one of my favorite activities to do with my family is to go into New York City, but obviously with quarantine, we can't do that. So instead, I wanted to take you on a sort of virtual trip around New York City with this really cool book. It's called This Is New York. This is by M. Sasek. Um, yes, just M. And M. Sasek was born in 1916. Goodness, that is a long time ago. So this is a really, really cool book. It's a classic. And the illustrations are pretty cool too, so you can pay attention to those as well. And we're going to take a trip with this book all around New York City. Here we go. Okay, okay, I'll throw in another clock. Another clock? What do you think that means? What a strange opening line for a book. Have you ever heard of a hook before? A hook is the opening line or sentence of a book or a, an essay or a poem, any, anything that's the very start of a piece of writing and it has to get you excited and sort of interested so you keep reading. So the hook of this book is, okay, okay, I'll throw in another clock. In the year 1626, wow, 1626, what a long time ago, a Dutchman, Peter Minuet, bought the island of Manhattan from the Native Americans for $24 worth of handy housewares. It remains the biggest bargain in American history. Businessmen say that now he would have to throw in another $8 billion. Wow, that was a pretty good purchase on his part, huh? Pretty good deal. And if you want to learn more about the Native Americans who, um, who owned Manhattan before the Dutch did, there are some really interesting books and stories that I'm sure you can find about them because they have a long and really interesting history that I'm sure you would be thrilled to learn about. And it's really important to remember, I'm just going to take a quick, book, quick break from the book, it's really important to remember with places like New York and America and most places, there were people who lived here before the colonizers came, you know, before Christopher Columbus and all of those people. So it's really neat to learn all of their histories too and learn the histories of all sorts of people who live in a certain place and not just people you might be familiar with. Okay, moving on. And no wonder, New York is the largest city in the Western Hemisphere, and it is full of the biggest things. If you've ever been to New York City, I'm sure you know it is very, very big. One of the tallest buildings in the world, the Empire State Building. 1,472 feet high, 102 floors, 74 passenger elevators, and the most spectacular views from the top. And there's a little note at the back. Uh, in 1960, the tallest building in the world was the Empire State Building. Today, it is the Twin Patronus Towers in Malaysia. That's pretty cool. 
So here's the Empire State Building. Or here's a drawing of it, at least. This book is full of cool, fun facts, so we're going to learn lots together. The biggest cars, that is a very big car down there, and Times Square, and the biggest traffic jams in the world. Now that's a, once again, this book was written and published in the 1960s, which is almost about 60 years ago. And so this is a pretty old picture of Times Square. You see the billboards are billboards just like this one and they're not the mechanical ones or the computer ones that you see today. But it's still Times Square, it's still very busy. The biggest stretch of streets to be policed are New York, 6,000 miles of them. That is a lot of streets. The biggest Sunday papers. Like the New York Times, which, yes, right there you see the New York Times. The New York Times has a super big paper and Newsweek and some other ones as well. One of the biggest ports in the world. In 1960, the biggest port in the world was in New York. Today, it is in Singapore. Thousands of vessels yearly call it its piers. The Statue of Liberty, the largest lady in the world from whose head, 10 feet wide from ear to ear, you can watch the city skyline and the busy sea. So the Statue of Liberty's head is 10 feet wide. That's longer than my entire body certainly and probably yours as well I don't know anyone who's 10 feet tall if you do though that's pretty cool there's the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island the biggest ships dock along the Hudson River in mid in midtown Manhattan New York City consists of the five boroughs, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Richmond, which is also called Staten Island. Here is the Staten Island Ferry. Oh, there's some wind. The greatest humidity and heat attack New York in some, oh, the greatest humidity and heat attack New York in summer. New Yorkers counterattack with air conditioners. Do they ever? And today, some people have central air conditioning instead of these units. Although we still have these units in my house because it's a pretty old house. When all the air conditioners are turned on at one time, cables burn out and dig we must. That's what the power companies do. The biggest meat eater of all times, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, can be seen in the New York Museum of Natural History. Have you ever been to the Museum of Natural History? That was one of my favorite museums. I know I'm going a little fast with the pictures, but this is a very long book and I want to get to all of these cool facts. The biggest store in the world and one of the smallest. The Macy's is the biggest and then there are little hot dog stands. And there are all sorts of little food stands around New York even today. For there are also small things in this big, big city. City Hall. There is also a village, Greenwich Village, with its small streets like McDougal Alley and its small shops. Trinity Church, the oldest in New York, is not so small as it looks. Its tower is 280 feet high. Goodness. There are 4,000 churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples in the city. That's a lot. 
But that's because New York City is very diverse. It has lots of different kinds of people who practice lots of different religions, and they all live in the same place. How cool is that? I think it's pretty cool. There are organizations to care for the welfare of your body, of your soul, and of your country. So the lady on the top says, United Hospital Fund, and then there's a band on the bottom to take care of your soul. New York is the home of the United Nations with its more than 80 member countries. And then there's a little note in the back, which I'll read to you. It says, today the United Nations has more than 190 member nations. Wow. So in 60 years, it gained 80, no, it gained 110 new members in terms of nations. People from all, the, all of them are at home in New York. If you don't know what the United Nations is, it's a big building where lots of diplomats from all, all countries, maybe not all, but many countries all over the world come and meet and talk about the world's issues. That's why it's called the United Nations, because it's a whole bunch of nations united. So, you can shop in any language. In German. I would try to read that to you, but I don't know that I can. It says, Brow House, and Little Health Brow. In Spanish, that's a movie theater that has some Spanish titles. In Yiddish, In Czech and Slovak. And in Hungarian. So these are drawings of real life places, or at least places that were real life in the 1960s. And they have all sorts of different kinds of people all living together. Uh, Italian. That's some pizza, we know that one. Russian. And without this diversity, New York City would not be as exciting as it is. So diversity is a really good word to remember. And even in English, at a supermarket. Look at all those different people shopping. I think that's pretty cool. Can you read this? I don't know if you can, but it says, Fun Ying Kuang Lum Wa Fu. In other words, welcome to Chinatown. So I think now we're going to learn about all the different places in New York City and how they're diverse and how they contribute diversity to New York City. Harlem is uptown. The police close many streets in New York so the children can play there. That's so nice. I'm not sure if that's still true, but if it is, that's pretty cool. Park Avenue is one of the most elegant avenues of New York. In Harlem, it looks like this. And here it is, 70 blocks downtown. This is the elegant way to keep the buildings clean. Everyone does their part. All traffic in New York moves up and down. Up, down. There are 24,000 elevators in the city. Today, there are 67,000 elevators. All the way up on the roofs are water tanks. All the way down underground are the subways. They go in two directions, uptown and
and downtown. People walk uptown or downtown. Dresses travel uptown or downtown, and buses too. You can see those at the bottom of the page. Paying your fare in the bus is like putting your pennies in a piggy bank. New York has many tunnels. This one takes trains into a building, like Penn Station. And this one, the Lincoln Tunnel, takes cars under the Hudson River. That's pretty cool. That's some great engineering. And if you've ever been in the Lincoln Tunnel, it's really neat to be in there because it's very dark because it's underwater basically, but there are lots of lights. It's very cool. When you come out, you are in the state of New Jersey. From here, you see that over on Manhattan, almost every building is a skyscraper. Those that are not, probably will be very soon. New Yorkers adore to watch them grow. Have you ever watched a skyscraper being built? I haven't, but that sounds pretty cool. Ah, this one has grown beautifully. It is the GE building, part of Rockefeller Center. For fun, you can see the sights from the top or go skating at the bottom. Rockefeller Center is one of my favorite places in New York City. The ice skating is really neat and one thing that I like is they have all these flags around the, the circle of the ice rink, or the square, I guess. And it's really cool because it's basically, just like the United Nations, it's all these different countries represented all around the ice rink. And it's very beautiful and they have a big Christmas tree there in the wintertime. You can also skate in Central Park, even in warm weather. Oops, sorry. Or you can feed New York's huge fluffy squirrels. They love peanuts. Although, I know this book was written a while ago, but you really shouldn't do that anymore because they, you're, you're not supposed to feed squirrels and pigeons and stuff anymore. Ah, peanuts and almost everything else you can buy from a machine, even a pen. So there are lots of these different vending machines. I'm not sure if some of these exist anymore, but it's pretty cool to see what sorts of things existed a little bit ago. Let's see, you could buy photo, oh, like a photo booth, those still exist. You could buy gumballs, soup, uh, an ID, drinks, we still have those, ice cream, uh, a car, or even a pen. Well, rent a car. This is Columbus Circle. Mail in the mail early in the day. It's the better way. Those are some old fashioned mailboxes. Those are pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I think so. The George Washington Bridge spans the Hudson. So that one is on top of the water. And it's a very pretty bridge. Brooklyn Bridge crossing the East River is the oldest and and is popular with everyone from cameramen two songwriters. So lots of people have photographed and written about the Brooklyn Bridge. Very famous. From the Brooklyn side, this is Manhattan at night. Very beautiful, I think. In New York, Fire strikes frequently, and so do people. So you see there's the fire alarm, and there are some people actually on strike, which means that they are, um, they're not working for a little bit because they're protesting something that's unfair. Many fires, many hydrants, 
90,000 of them. Uh, today there are 110,000. And many fire escapes too. Every six minutes, a fire alarm in the city brings out the engines, the engines, motors roaring, bells clanging, red lights flashing, sirens screaming. And today, a fire alarm sounds every 30 seconds, so that's kind of unfortunate. I guess there are more fires today than there were 80 years ago. 60 years ago. <laughs> I said that earlier, I forgot. Hydrants can also have other uses, for instance, as little Tony's starting point in business. I wonder what little Tony's business is going to be. I guess we'll find out. Ah, with luck, it grows to this. Big Tony and Company. A shoe and hat cleaning business. That's sort of cool. With more luck, Tony ends up here in Wall Street. Its name comes from the wall built here by the Dutch against the Native Americans. Wall Street is the financial district in New York where a lot of the big banks and stock companies and things like that uh, work. And again, the history with the Native Americans is very interesting and I encourage you to look it up. Art seekers can seek art in more than 200 galleries and nine art museums in New York City. And the little note says, today there are more than 450 art galleries and 100 museums in New York City. That's a lot. This one is built by Frank Lloyd Wright, who's a famous architect. It's the Guggenheim Museum, and as you can see, its architecture is pretty cool. On the beach of Coney Island, one million sun seekers seek sun on a summer Saturday. On a summer Sunday. I can read words, I promise. That is a lot of people. Coney Island is a very famous beach and amusement park. Yankee Stadium. Baseball or football fans, 70,000 strong, come here to watch their heroes. Today, only baseball is played at Yankee Stadium. The Giants, uh, the football team, the Giants, played their last game there in 1973, but it used to be both a baseball and a football field, apparently. That's cool. I didn't know that either. Everything in New York comes wonderfully wrapped, including football players. A drugstore. You can get everything here from bath soap to bicycles, from hamburgers to Hamlet. And we certainly still have those today. Sort of like an all-purpose store. Near me, the all-purpose store I can think of is Rite Aid. That's a drugstore, and you can get basically anything there. And here is Times Square, the biggest supermarket of them all. Frankfurters, hamburgers, uh, Aromarama. I don't know what Aromarama is, but that's pretty cool. Uh, oh, Aroma, okay. Frankfurters, hamburgers, Aromarama, which is like a lot of smells. Burgerama, a lot of hamburgers. Uh, movies, people, cars, lights, from dawn to dawn. And there we are, back in Times Square, except this time it's lit up. And that's the Times Square that we know, right? That's the one that's always in movies and, and pictures and stuff. A few steps uptown on Broadway, watch for the weather star high above. When it is orange, look out! bad weather. But when it is green, get ready for another lovely day in New York. And I think that's where they drop the New Year's Eve ball, but I'm not positive. And that is the end of This is New York. I hope you enjoyed our fun little virtual story time uh, trip to New York City. I know it's not the same as a real one, but I really hope you liked it. I did, and I learned lots of cool facts that I never knew. 
as I said, diversity is super, super important. I encourage you guys to look up the stories of the Native Americans if you're interested, or look up some of these different languages that we learned about that are all found in New York City. It's crazy. Um, diversity is really, really important, and it's what makes New York City the special, special place that it is, because there are so many people working together from all different backgrounds to make the city really wonderful. And if there weren't so many people and so many different kinds of people bringing unique experiences, it would be pretty boring. It would all be the same. So the differences are what makes it beautiful and wonderful and special. And that's the same thing for you guys. All of your differences make you beautiful and wonderful and special. And you contribute to a diverse society that makes the world more interesting and cooler, just like New York City. So that was This is New York. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, I'm Hannah from Story Kids. Keep on reading, everybody. Bye-bye.